Uh, tell us about your most empowering experience in the climate movement. Um, I'd say the most recent strike. 80,000 people out in Auckland streets just standing there surrounded by all those people supporting you and giving that speech that that empowered me. That, it's shocking when people yeah. actually show up. You can't believe it. Oh my believe God. Because there's no way to tell if people will show yeah. up. And they did. And yeah. we were like, far out. Yeah. yeah. I felt that so with the anti-mining protest as well. Yeah. Oh, your turn. Oh, okay. Uh, imagine 10 years from now, what does your vision for the future of Aotearoa look like? Uh, I want us to have more farmers making more diverse um, products. I think farmers are going to have to feed ourselves, feed the population, and not mm. this bullshit sending dairy products to China. Eventually China's going to go, you know what, we're all, our kids are all getting asthma, and kill it overnight. So, mm. um, yeah, we need more farmers, not less. It just doesn't make sense, eh? Hey? Like, when you think about it from any other angle except for just making the most amount of money, to be taking 95% of this milk, burning it in these coal-fired things, to then chuck into ships, right. to send across halfway across the world to yeah. a people that can't Once properly more. digest it. The thing naturally. that is euphemistically called inputs means that you're buying palm kernel from like Indonesia, which mm. is burnt rainforest. You're mm. getting super phosphates, which are illegally mined in, in, in Africa and shipped all the way here. You're using liquid nit um, sorry, uh, you know, uh, urea, the which is fossil fuel yeah, produced. Yeah. So um, at every step of the way, intensive dairy make sense. is poisonous. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Question from the audience. Hello, Whoa. audience. Carl asks, Who's someone that you look up to and why? Lucy Lawless. Yeah, Luke she's awesome. John. <laughs> Bunny McDermott. Bunny McDermott now runs Greenpeace New Zealand and I met her 25 years ago on a boat where I actually played her in The Sinking of the Rainbow Warrior. Mm. She was then the, um, the head of Greenpeace New Zealand, now she runs it internationally. Such a solid, decent, good soul, brilliant woman, funny, urbane. Uh, a real activist and um, always speaks the truth. So that's what permeates the whole structure of Greenpeace uh, is, you know, is who's at the top and we've got a good one. I'm so proud of this organization. Mm. Tommy Etty, Fina Cooper. Yeah, Mike Smith. Mm. Yeah. Great activist, Mike Smith. This one's uh, Luke John, how have your friends and family reacted to the stands you've made? Ooh. Uh, my parents have become a lot more radical because of it. We've pushed them to, you know, they've jumped on board. Um, Great. Grandparents are happy that I'm not using their last name. So that's, a, that's an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Um, yeah, so my grand, my mum's last name is Lavelle and then my dad's last name is Wee John. And on that side, the Pakeha side, they were... They not were, into it. They're, they're not as into it. They're yeah. hard, die hard national supporters, but they're happy that I'm leading it and they seem to be proud anyway. Um, yeah, the only time I did give that last name as my last name was when parliamentary security asked when they were kicking us out. You were suddenly Lavelle. Yeah, I was suddenly <laughs> Luke Lavelle because <laughs> figured it's not lying, but it's not letting them know the whole thing it. either. Yeah. Where you got? Question from the audience. Hello, Ooh. audience. Andresa Felice says, What's your opinion about the Brazilian president completely ignoring the devastation of the Amazon? And what do you think should be done to stop that? Dick move. Yeah, dick move. You're a bit of an evil bastard. And yeah. I hope that there's some Brazilian warrior princess who's going to go and bloody set that country straight. And there are. There are people fighting that. So big up that. Keep up that fight. How important do you think collective action on climate is right now? It's all, it's all we've got. Yeah. It's all we got. It's the power of one. It's all of us banding together. There's more of us than there are of those indecent folks who are making money out of mm. our, our own you know, the destruction of the planet. Um, just know that you have the power and if we get together we can mobilise incredible change for good. We can have, our kids can have happy, safe, stable futures um, as we enjoyed in the past. Um, but we can't allow things to go on as they are and we're not going to allow it. Mm. Okay. Sorry. Okay, how has learning about the climate crisis changed you? Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting one because we're not really taught any of it in school. So it all has to be self-learned. And it means it's brought me closer to other people who are also trying to learn about it because, you know, you're all bouncing off each other and sharing articles, sharing uh, journal articles, research papers and whatnot. But I think the main way that it's changed me 
is that in everything I do, I'm now thinking about like the impact this will have. And I know that personal change isn't what's needed, but you still feel guilty if you like. Oh yeah. Eat a hamburger, jump yeah. on a plane, drink all milk, of that put stuff. milk in your tea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. I know it. Um, how does your school support? My your schools. Action? How were they? They're one of the only schools in the country that actually support the school strikes. Amazing. And they were like, oh, there's a lot more now, but they were first. What school? Western Springs College. Fantastic. Shout That's out. a free thinking school. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I no, love great, it. Um, great principal there. And Brilliant. yeah. Go for it. Your turn. We're told there are lots of things we can do as individuals. How important is that compared to talk, taking collective action? They're listening. These cards are <laughs> listening to us. Individual right. change, societal yeah. change. Bit of both. It's, it, it, it's all the same, eh? I mean, yeah. we've all got to be firing on all fronts to clean up our act. I guess, yeah. you know. Um, I heard you say that that individual action isn't what's needed. Tell me why you said that. Right. So I don't want to downplay the importance of individual action because if you, like, have your keep cup, your honey wrap, whatnot, for one thing that gets you thinking about it all the time, which is only good, and it also gets all your friends seeing that, your family, so it's contagious, it mm. spreads like that. But the reason why I say we can't rely on individual action is because I'm not happy with this idea that's pushed by the people that pollute, this idea that it's your fault that we have climate change because you ate a hamburger or whatnot. What I think needs to happen is that everyone needs to be making the right choices. But the only way you get a whole society to be quickly making the right choices, if, if it's easier to do that. So if you've got to go to work in the morning, if the train is faster, is more convenient, and is cheaper than your car, you're always going to train, but it's not. Yeah. So I think we've got to change society so that everyone makes this own, yeah. those individual choices. Because also, expecting minimum wage, expecting low income people to go vegan, to make these choices in the current society, I think is bullshit. So. Right. Yeah, and it also stymies. Um, the evolution of your path. They just go, yeah. it's too hard, I can't think about it, I'm so, I'm just trying to pay the rent, right? Exactly. Um, so, You've got yes. bigger problems right in front of you, you can't yeah. be thinking 10 down, years down the line. That's sometimes. right. Is it your turn, my turn? Question oh. from the audience. Hello. Audience's turn. Abigail asks, what do you think makes people feel scared to take action and what would you say to them? Mm. Join us. I would say join us. It is scary. It's even scary for us, you know, it's, mm. if you're if you're well known, you'd get, you'd get a bit of heat, man. There's some blowback, but fuck it. We don't have time to be precious about ourselves anymore. Like mm. it's time to be badass. And when we get together, it's so much easier. So join us. We've got some cool stuff coming up and you're going to love being part of it. And there's always like steps you can take. You don't have to go straight to getting arrested on the first day. You know, there's other things that you can be doing, ways you can be supporting people like Greenpeace, like the school strikes. Because, yeah, some kids can't leave school on a strike because education's their only way out of the hood. So there's just always other things you can be doing, supporting your friends and whatnot. But, yeah, join us. Fight. We've got another one from Rani. Lucy, if you could get people to do just one thing to help prevent the climate crisis, what would it be? Oh, nag your senator or your parliamentarian or something and let them know that you're watching them and you're going to vote their asses out next mm. time. Yeah, I think vote's a good one, but you've stolen that one. So I'll Give go me another. learn, you know, read, educate yourself. Watch live streams from Greenpeace about... <laughs> <laughs> How to be more badass. Yeah, yeah, that's the title now. We've, we've it? got it. You've got it essential. It's part of your essential nature. Be badass. And we've got all the steps of how to, how to up your badass quotient. Go ahead. Your turn, my turn. I don't know. If you could sit down in a room with a CEO from one of the 100 companies that are responsible for more than 70% of climate change, what would you say, except for go fuck yourself? Um, <laughs> well, I would probably uh, want to sit down with Federated Farmers it, from mm. New Zealand because our biggest contributor to um, our biggest climate uh, criminal biggest is, climate is, criminals. Um, is the intensive dairy industry and mm. it's really poisoning our rivers and uh, depleting our soils. So um, I would want to talk to them about regenerative farming. There was a time when we had less cows and were more profitable. So for New Zealand, that's really important. Mm. What about you? The urgency of it, eh? Yeah. And that's something I think my generation uniquely understands. When you're told that, you know, 30 years down the line, it's likely there'll 
<clears throat> be a lot less food, there'll be a lot more droughts, there'll be a lot less habitable places in the world. That matters more to a 17 year old, I think, than yeah. it does to Winnie P at nearly 80. Oh, God, don't get me started. <laughs> I know I worry about 20,000, 20 million Australians landing on our beaches looking for a glass of water. They're not yeah. going to go north, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a good point actually, because people talk a lot about Pacifica as climate survivors, but no one really talks about how all of Australia is going to be uninhabitable. All of Florida is going to be underwater, all yeah. of London, where do all those people go? Yeah, exactly. Hugely I mean, populated places just also, yeah, anyway. come to our doorstep. Like. What is the scariest thing you've done for the climate? <sighs> Spoken to Duncan Garner. <laughs> oh, how'd that go? <clears throat> Oh, he, he, he was actually, it was, it was scary going on, but he was nice because he had gotten a lot of flack from Billy and Greta the day before, so it was actually fine. But, yeah, I think putting yourself out there, I, I never really intended to, and I kind of tried to fight against it at, in the start, mm. and then I realised that actually people can't, like humans can't get behind statistics and get behind movements and ideas as well as they can get behind faces and names for some reason. Oh, that's and interesting. Yeah, I mean, my mum's a psychologist and she kind of nailed that down a bit and I was like, all right, sure, whatever the movement needs, I'll be a face if that's what it takes. Right. Yeah, so chuck Bless yourself you. out there Bless you. for the boomers to insult on Facebook. Your turn. Okay. Yeah, for the boomers to insult, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> if you're about to occupy an oil rig, and you could take one, this is an, this is hypothetical, hypothetical. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an oil rig, and you could take one luxury item with you, what would it be? I'm um, going to take some spirulina, because you might be up there longer than you think, you might need some greens. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. You've got nothing but chocolate and peanuts. Um, the only good thing about chocolate and peanuts is because it keeps your poop small because there's a lot of, you know, you've got to huh. chuck all your poop down with you. I should actually, I want to write piece, this down. Yeah, Greenpeace <laughs> leaves nothing but footprints, right? You've got to take it all out with you. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with spirulina. Love it in oil CEO. I'm glad I got that question. <laughs> right, what question have I got? Your question, baby. 170,000 people took to the streets during the latest climate strike. Really? In what country? In NZ. <coughs> How do we mobilise more people? Because 170,000, we've got four, four mil. mil. Nearly five. So we, we need, yeah, we, we can do better, eh? How do we mobilise more people? Education. I reckon. Getting out there, letting people know that it, yeah. How do you educate them when they want to just keep their, you know, their heads in their armpits? I don't think many people do. I think people just have an all-time lack of community and that if we actually engage people kanohi to kanohi, face to face, we can have those conversations and people are scared or they're keen mm. to learn and then we can actually get it done. Yeah, people feel very threatened to, like farmers in New Zealand, because I've yeah. been talking to a, a number of them recently. Very threatened, like they feel like mm. we're getting a lot of blame, so they hunker down, get in a really defensive crouch, and We've got to it's not that. about that. We're, what, yeah. you know, what we're saying is, no, we want you to do better, and we want you to be well the solution and do better, as well and your animals to be better, and your soil, and, your, and it's possible. Yeah. But um, this mindset that we're in at the moment is just stymieing your future and all our futures. I mean, yeah, we can't get divided on it because it's yeah. the everyday people that are being hurt yeah. by this. Yeah, and, and we need them. The ones they at the top to that are actually polluting and actually controlling and profiting off this. And controlling the message. They're yeah. controlling the message. And they're, they're yeah. loving that we've got this rural-urban divide, that yeah. we've got these old people, yeah. young people divide yeah. that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I did just contribute to it with that boomer comment, so I'll apologise for that one. No, 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 fuck them. <laughs> because also, I am a Gen Xer and I'm disgusted with my generation. You know, mm. I think John Key was my generation, which is why I was so anti that government, because we knew decades ago that this was coming. Mm. Mm. And um, I think the reason that they became this sort of neoliberal money-making machine wasn't because they don't believe in climate change, it's because they do. And they're like, mm. we're going to bloody uh, milk this cow as long as we can. Anyway, yeah. there I get on my little... You know, just, I'm really disappointed in my generation, but I was very happy to see everybody showing up. A lot yeah. of older people showing up to support the teen. Oh yeah, we wouldn't have got 170,000 without the adults yeah, and grandparents. Yeah, so adults Everyone are, coming together. 
yeah, are soft yeah. and getting off their asses and putting their bodies in the street. Mm. That's a lot. I reckon for everyone on the street, there's like a hundred at home who agree. Mm. Fully. So now we need them to show up and bring their bodies to the street. Population. Yeah, well, like, we seem yeah. to have made up our mind, all yeah. the people. It's just the, the politicians, the media that still seem to think it's up for debate. Yeah, boo. <laughs> no more debate. Okay. Question from the audience. Hello, oh. audience. Sunisha asks Hey, what more can be done to change the way most governments think in reference to climate change so that they take action? Vote them out. Protest them out. Protest them out till they take it seriously and do not stop. And support protesters. Mm. But no, on that point of voting, like, politicians are the most risk averse people that I've ever met. And we basically, every three years, give them their job. And they're always terrified they're going to lose it. That's why they put so, many, so, much, mo so much more effort into the election season than they do into governing us. I think we can actually, with our power, show them that we're not just going to be out in the streets, we're going to be out voting as well, and we're going to keep those values we had in the streets in the voting booth. So if they don't buck their ideas up, they're going to be out of a job. Too right. Luke we John, we're now past climate change denial, but how do we get to the next level of action? Climate change urgency. So everyone's agreed it's a bad thing, but now the debate's kind of like, oh, how much do we as a country do and when do we start? Yeah. And the by 2030 or by 2050? Yeah. Do we do the EDS in 2020 yep. or 2025? How about um, yesterday? Yeah. Here you go, baby. Take a card. What is the most surprising thing someone has said about your climate activism? Stop well, it. my dad, <laughs> God bless him while he was alive, um, just thought I was being a scallywag or, or something, you know? You know, that I was doing it just to be a rebel or something. It's mm. like, I was a good girl. I was like to my father, have you ever met me before? <laughs> I was a good girl at school, you know. I was, uh, mm. It was very, it's hard for me to do that, but I know it's morally right. Yeah. Is to step that the law, in this case, is an ass or the mores of society are unhealthy and it is morally wrong for me not to stand up for the, the, the yeah. earth and for life on the planet. Yeah. For me, I think... Yeah that people suggesting that we just want a day off school. I don't oh, think that, I don't think they realize how many days off school I just take anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like if we were just out here to wag and go to Maccas, we can yeah. just wag and go to Maccas. We don't need yeah. to do all of the sign yeah. painting, all of the media, yeah. all of the, I used you to know. get it, you just want attention. It's like to get attention in New Zealand is so easy. I could oh, do yeah. a billion other things rather than, you know, could than this. Star in a movie. I could, I could, I don't know, there's a lot of things. I could go to some stupid, boring celebrity party, which I never do. Yeah. But anyway, okay, darling, what do we need to do collectively to fix the climate crisis? I think they're going to be surprised by this one. But protest and vote. Have we, have we mentioned that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, all right. When did you first start thinking about the climate crisis? Oh, way back. You know, I heard about this, I'm sure, when I was about 10. So that's 41 years ago. Mm. I, yeah, I heard mm. that this was uh, what scientists were predicting would happen. And I heard it. And, and because my dad was an ultra-religious guy who um, kind of believed in end-of-the-world scenarios, I was freaking, bink, what? Mm. Here's some scientists talking about some end-of-the-world. <laughs> like, I have to say, that was probably what sensitized me yeah. to those kind of messages. Well, it's, it's crazy, like, in t 2014, I think it was, when the Mayan calendar said that oh, Jesus. W the world's going to end, and everyone lost their shit. And then we, now we've got scientific consensus that if we don't change our way of life, it will, and everyone's kind of like, oh, yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, okay. I'm not convinced. <laughs> okay. Can I hear another mm. argument? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely there's another side. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You're funny. Ooh. How will you explain your generation's actions to the children of the future? What children of the future? Oh, Ooh. burn! That hurts, <laughs> that hurts. I mean, I'm not going to have kids because of the climate crisis, eh? I don't you, feel like you'd be... I already think I'm in a pretty iffy position. So to bring someone else into the world for these, you know, our predictions of three degrees in 2050, which some people have been making, which would mean 55% of the planet is uninhabitable, it's like... How, how can you bring a kid into that? But that's outrageous hand, that we have bringing, to think like that. Bringing kids, it is outrageous. And perhaps 
having kids is the only reason to stop this. Well, yeah, if all well, of the you know, climate activists stop having kids, then all you're going to have are denial kids. And then, you know, <laughs> Look, I'm a denial kid, well. don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> denial kids make up their own minds eventually, you know? And that, that's what it is. It's time for you to make up your own mind mm. and act on it. Yeah. Stop acting like um, the, the, your parents' beliefs are controlling your m mindset, you know? You're just being lazy. Right. It's when a bit you're pejorative, isn't it? Look at me all judgy judge. <laughs> <laughs> when you're swinging into action, yep. what would be your theme song? Sorry, it's a given. I've, I've, I've done that in life. What would, be your, what would be your theme song be? Should we have the final countdown? It's a the bit bleak. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, not the, something gonna, hopeful. We're going to rock it, something man. Good, we're going to yeah. freaking rock it. We, You've got to have a dream. You've got to have a dream. How are you going to make a dream come true? Okay, if you were the Prime Minister, Luke Weijon, which you probably will be in about 10 years, uh, what would you do first? First? Yeah. Um, well, it's 10 years down the line, so we're already pretty stuffed. And Stop it! Sorry, oh, got, no, sorry, help, hopeful messaging, empowering the people. It's not just that, um, we've got to act as, I mean, seriously, because yeah, it yeah, will yeah, disempower yeah. you to think that way. Hey, yeah. Nah, we're going to okay. fucking fight. Ten years down the line, joyfully. the urgency mm -hmm. it would need, I think you'd have to engage some War Powers acts. Like, not What did really, you just say? So, War Powers? Not, 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 not a big up war here at Greenpeace, but, um... <laughs> But the type of thing, when a war is declared, like you think World War II and America, entire economies and societies all shift with the one goal of fighting that war. You know, we're a place that used to make microwaves now makes tanks, whatever. But we need to do the exact same thing, but for climate change. And if there's stuff standing in the way, then the Prime Minister needs more power to be right. able to go, because do this, do this, do this, do this. Is this generation's Nuclear, nuclear free moment. Yeah. Nuclear free moment, yeah. This yeah. is our movement. Final audience question. Ooh. Hello. Andressa says, I really want to help the world, but I don't know where I can start. What was your very first step? Give us a tip. Well, I started by supporting um, Greenpeace in the 80s after the Rainbow Warrior bombing, which happened in my town. And the French government, thank you very much. <laughs> um, and so it was about giving money and giving visibility um, back then. And then um, I just got involved because I couldn't, couldn't not. What was, mm. what was your? Um, Nikki Kay, I think, accidentally got me involved. She came to our school and she was pretty useless. Um, and then the next day, Chloe Swarbrick came. And she, sorry, these are um, New Zealand pro, uh, politicians. One's very right wing, very uh, pushing these ideas that we can wait and that it's not urgent. And the, the market will fix it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the free market will fix climate change. And then Chloe Swarbrick came the next day and was a complete polar opposite. And I basically was like, right, I know which side of history I want to stand on. How yeah. do I help people doing the right thing? And then being a millennial or a Gen Z, uh, I googled the address and then just rocked up to her place of work and said, how can I help? Right on. You got inspired. Mm. Amazing. I think that's what they call it. I love it. Last one. Lucky last, Luke. Um, Luke Newcomb. Hey, <laughs> just saying that could be your platform. New handle. Luke. Um, what advice do you have for people who want to get more involved in the movement? <laughs> I think we just covered that, didn't we? So on that note. My goodness. <laughs> so, what do you, uh, you got any actions planned before Christmas, Luke? I think Greenpeace has some actions planned before Christmas. Oh, so that's right. Keep your ears open for those ones. We're Got to get everyone out here, so we yeah. need, you know, a bunch of normal, pe normal Joes like us. Exactly. We're going to join together with uh, our climate strikers, with Ewe, with Extinction Rebellion, and with Greenpeace, mm. and we're going to uh, roll out some really cool things. Can't tell you about it, but stay tuned <laughs> uh, to find out what's on, on the, the cards. cards. <laughs> <laughs>